What's, what is Socrates doing to poor Darwin? <laughs> something going on down there? I mean, God, I think I'm getting him a little excited. Yeah. This is actually the bone. You can really see. Hey, what's going on everyone? Ken in here. I'm with my Galapagos tortoises and my Aldabra board. Poor Nostradamus is just getting his head rubbed away by Darwin following Matt and the camera. Wanted to talk to you a little bit about the giant tortoises. I love these guys. The weather has broken here in Florida. It is warm all year long. We've opened up their habitat that they use in the summer. And that means these animals are getting to really exercise and wander. In the wild, Galapagos tortoises would wander through different kind of uh, little biomes on the Galapagos. Each island has its own biome, and within that biome, it also has different areas where there are different vegetations uh, during different times of the year that the tortoises, look at this, what's, what is Socrates doing to poor Nostradamus? Socrates is definitely the one that's got the most cantankerous attitude, whereas Darwin, uh, excuse me, Nostradamus is the nicest. Let's see what happens here. Uh, I am on hand to make sure nothing, I think Socrates just wants to go under Nostradamus to get to the other side. That's it. I don't think this is an aggressive behavior. I think this is just a tortoise that is uh, impatient. She's not a patient girl, so you gotta look out for her. How funny is that though? Pretty amazing. But come on over here and look underneath Nostradamus. We're seeing a good bit of his underside right there. And you can see, look, concavity. He is a male. This is incredible for me to know this. I found this out a few years back because because he actually averted his uh, male phallus, his reproductive organs, his penis, as it is called. And basically, you can see that concavity underneath him. That's so that if he were to meet a female Aldabra tortoise, he'd be able to mount her successfully and not roll off. What's incredible is that he's showing the signs of being a male kind of early. He's not quite 200 pounds yet. Usually the animals have to be about 200 pounds before you can positively ID them. But we've seen that with our guy here, Nostradamus. Um, both in captivity with the Aldabra and the Galapagos tortoises, males are harder to find. Very interesting. I don't know why they're a little bit harder to find. It could be because uh, in the past people were incubating for females and didn't incubate enough male temps. They are temperature sex determined, meaning that at lower temperatures, you're gonna have females. At higher temperatures, you're gonna get more males. And at moderate temperatures, you have a good mix between both in the nest or incubating device. Um, so I was mentioning a little bit about these guys, how they can wander around a little bit more because of the summer weather. Uh, if you look over here, and we're gonna go in there in a little bit, these guys will follow us in there. In that palmetto thicket is some of the best exercise uh, that Galapagos tortoises can get. Very important because as we know, when I first got Darwin 10 years ago now, she came to me from Marin County, uh, Marin County, California, and she unfortunately was kept in a very flat area. Uh, Galapagos tortoises, as I was mentioning, they wander far and wide over these, uh, these volcanic islands of the Galapagos, and that really gives them a lot of exercise. And they'll wander because they're looking for different foods to eat. Some time of the year when they're down in the lowlands, certain vegetation's more abundant. And then they'll have to wander kind of over this rocky uh, terrain to kind of get to a different food source. And by doing that, they are exercising and lifting their bodies up. Come over here real quick. Look at how Socrates puts her feet down. You see how her little back legs are pretty much underneath her. Her whole foot pad is connecting to the ground. But if you turn right around, Matt, and look at Darwin. Darwin, when I first got her, she was scuttlebutt. She kind of dragged her hiney along the ground. She wasn't lifting herself up because she was fed a very rich diet. <coughs> she gained a lot of weight and she didn't have enough topography to exercise. Excuse me while I cough. <coughs> I've been fighting a bit of a cold. But anyway, we got her here and we built, we built this water bowl. And that water bowl provides her with the ability to walk up and over. I've recently cleaned it out. I'm gonna fill it up again. But the other important thing that we have in the enclosure is over here. These guys get to kind of wander into this thicket. Someone was here when we came over and he That's walked right. out. That's right, they love coming over here because over the winter season when they're locked in here, because it's easier for me to keep them in this enclosure 
so that when I need to get them into their heated shelter, we got it, okay? But in the springtime, once I know temperatures aren't gonna drop below 65 degrees anymore, I slide open this gate and they go in there and they start eating all the different weeds and vines that have grown up. But more importantly, when we wander into this thicket, you can really see how these saw palmetto provide them with a lot of topography and exercise. I find the tortoises all throughout here. There's some green there. There's a lot of plants. And these guys are getting the exercise they need. They're also foraging for food, which is important. A lot of times in captivity, animals are just handed food. Well, I don't want to do that. I want them to live as natural a life as possible. So this thicket is kind of large. It's about the same size as their winter retreat. So they have a lot of room to move and they can kind of wander around and forage for food, different leaves, things like that. And that's exactly what they do. So it really works out well for them. I love seeing them do that. Um, it's also fun to kind of put some food in there for them so that they can find it. It's anything you can do to give enrichment to all your reptiles, whether you have a lizard, a snake, crocodilian, or a tortoise or turtle. It's so important. Uh, so this time of year is really fun. I love doing this. Like I said, we're gonna go ahead and fill this up here so they'll have their water source. We've been getting a lot of rain lately, which is also good because these tortoises and tortoises in general have a really good knack at holding on to water. They can drink just large amounts of water and then store it. And uh, it's important when you see a tortoise, especially a tortoise that lives in a dry, arid environment, like some of our desert tortoises here in the southwestern United States, uh, you don't want to see them in the wild and pick them up because if you pick them up, they get frightened, they void the contents of their bladders, and unfortunately that could kill them because now they don't have any moisture in their bodies. So the same thing with a Galapagos or an Aldabra tortoise. And you also notice this behavior that we're getting here from <clears throat> Nostradamus. He loves this. It's because basically it feels good, but there's another purpose it serves, and I'm about to show you. He likes to stretch out because in the wild, birds would fly down. And what do you think the birds are doing? The birds are plucking off ectoparasites like this. I just plucked off a tick. See that? They're just a fact of life here. They're, they can't really hurt the tortoises as long as they aren't covered in them. So basically, uh, this tick was on the neck of Nostradamus. And I think it feels good that I can kind of give them a scratch, but I can also feel around in some of these sensitive areas of their body and I can pluck off any ectoparasites. So I am a cleaning bird, if you will, with my tortoises. Isn't that right, my friend? Does that feel good? That's why he's almost in a trance-like state, but it's very good that I can do this. I can kind of just kind of feel around. And this is also something. Is there something going on down there? I mean... Did he just show you he something? He did. He showed me something. Oh my God. I think I'm getting him a little excited. Yeah, I think he likes that. <laughs> hey, listen, buddy. I'm happy you're feeling good. I got to get him a gal. We got to get Cersei uh, raised up here. Oh, that's a tortoise penis. Wow. We were talking about it earlier and he must have heard us. He wanted to show off. I am, in fact, a boy. So what we're going to do here is, of course, we have the smaller Aldabra tortoises just a little bit uh, further away. Uh, we're gonna try and raise them up and I'd love to one day be able to pair uh, Nostradamus with Cersei, uh, but it's gonna be quite some time. Uh, wow. Who, oh. just, who just went into the woods there? No one, they went that way and back. It was Socrates went towards it and back. So there you go, people. Hanging out with our giant tortoises here at Camp Cannon. Such beautiful animals. And really, to me, they're the pinnacle of tortoise keeping. If you've got a couple of galops and a few aldabras, you're doing all right. Uh, these guys are great. Let's also talk really quickly about their shells in general. Come on over to this side. I want to show you something. Shells are part of their anatomy. It's part of their skeletal system. And you can see there's some damage here, some little, just normal wear and tear. But look at this, from walking through the bush, she actually pushes through and shaves off some bark, but also it wears down her actual body here, her shell. Um, this is normal, we have a little damage here, it grows back, I don't worry about that. Got a little damage on Socrates, that's okay. It just flakes off, no big deal. These are superficial problems. If I noticed that there was a puncture or some kind of bleeding, uh, then I would take action, put some betadine on it. Uh, or if it was really serious, I'd have to get Dr. Mike Gillen from PGA Animal Clinic down here. 
to uh, help me out. But by and large, these shells, look at this, look what it's doing right here. They, they get a lot of wear and tear, like they're over this rock here, climbing right over. Uh, this is normal behavior and normal wear and tear for these animals. Um, it's what you want. You'll also see there's some pyramiding here uh, because when I first got Socrates and Darwin, they were both raised up in captivity uh, and kept indoors. These animals need higher humidity as their, as their, I almost said children, as they're young so that their shell grows properly. Uh, so those first hatchling years of a turtle or tortoise are important for shell growth. Uh, you can also see some battle damage right here. But I think it's character. Uh, here's a little damage right here, but it's healed up nice. This is actually the bone that's going to pop out. Okay, and the bone, it heals from the inside out. This must have gone down deep. The bone starts to replace itself underneath the dead part, and that'll pop out and get more keratin over the top. So these guys um, have a really good uh, anatomy and physiology that they can take care of themselves from these superficial kind of wounds. And they can feel through their shells also, which is why uh, Darwin was kind of moving back and forth while Socrates was on top of her. It's always just fun to hang out and get you guys reacquainted with the Galapagos tortoises, the giant tortoises I have here, and of course, Nostradamus, the Aldabra. Just beautiful, beautiful animals. And I love it when you guys come visit me, man, because uh, some days we're just hanging out and uh, the animals are just in great moods and they want to be seen. and. I love sharing them with you guys. So I hope you learned something about giant tortoises today, especially keeping them in captivity and what you need to do for these animals in order to keep them healthy. So that's what we're all about here at good old Camp Cannon. Thanks for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Uh, and don't forget, you can visit us every Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday for more videos. And if you really want to help support the channel, go to patreon.com slash campcannons where you can become a Patreon supporter for more exclusive content and get your questions answered. See you guys later.